Hi there everybody, it's Rarity here from inkabutterfly.wordpress.com Thank you so much for joining me this evening So it's the first of the month and uh, as you may be aware I participate in the Stamp Around UK video hop So dead important that you um, have a look in that description underneath So depending on the device it will either say show more or um, there'll be a little sort of little arrow pointing down if you click there, there's a whole list of participants into this video hop and they would all also appreciate your time, your comments, your likes and subscribes. Okay, the theme that we're all working to is metallics. Okay, and um, you'll hear me say a lot of, um, a lot of things are retiring. So the theme of my videos all week has been about What's, what's retiring and just giving them a last showcase for you guys when you're considering your purchases. So the metallic element I've brought in is the champagne foil. So I don't want to flick it too much into your screen because it is super reflective. Isn't that lovely? Um, so it is a retiring product. So that is what I've chosen um, as my metallic element. Uh, the sort of star of that is this um, lovely set of dies called Many Medallions. So these are going to, they do come as a bundle with a stamp set called Many Mates, which has some lovely sentiments in them, but I really do love this die. So we used that to um, die cut our foil and we cut it down. So you'll have seen me use this before and do a similar thing. So I've basically chopped out um, these sections and cut it in half to use um, on my card so I've already got it die cut and punched out and you know all the little um, bits punched out and trimmed it I've just got to trim it down for you okay so I did that card with one half and I've got the other card half to use so that's one thing okay and then the uh, sort of decoration is using Rooted in Nature. Isn't this such a lovely set? It's a large stamp set, two cases in um, cling, beautiful um, tree images and these lovely bold sentiments, which I really, really like. So um, that's been brought in for the tree and the sentiment. Okay, and we're gonna use the coordinating dies to cut that tree out. So we'll just grab that ready to use as well. So a lovely set of dies um, that coordinates with that. That's, so that's also on that last chance product list. The, we've used the two and a quarter inch circle punch, also retiring, and this ribbon, which I've put down, is metallic ribbon, so another metallic element. This is the Blushing Bride metallic ribbon, so it's a rose gold kind of look but I didn't think it was too distracting with the um, with the element there but uh, we're just going to change up a little bit of that and bring in a different metallic ribbon for our card that we're going to make with you today so all that's out the way all the links will be in the uh, description to those products check them out be quick um, once they hit that retiring list people start snapping things up very quickly so just um, be aware of that. Um, so I'm sticking with my very vanilla card base, so that's there ready to go. And instead of Blushing Bride, so this was done with Blushing Bride, um, I'm actually bringing in Petal Pink this time. So I've got a piece of Petal Pink that's two and three quarters by four and three eighths. And then a piece of Very Vanilla, which is two and a half by four and one eighth, okay? So they're going to layer together behind this, uh, which we'll do in a moment. So as I was explaining, this started life as a full size, um, full size die, and I just cut it in half. So I just need to finish trimming off this side. Just do that very simply with your snips. You can do it in a trimmer, but you just need to be a little bit careful um, that you don't sort of bend the uh, the little bits and pieces. But you can do it if you're careful. 
and I have done it with a trimmer in the past. So I'd already cut along this edge. I'm going to do little bits everywhere. Hang on. And then there was this decorative part here, which I did consider leaving on, but I but I've just got this. I, I do like things straight and square. It's just just my nature that I like things neat and tidy like that. So we've cut that off to a square. And I'm sure some of you would save that little piece there for something. I am not. So there we go. So that's our little um, thing cut down there. I'm just going to bring in a silicone craft sheet just to add some spots of glue behind these um, sort of centre portions here, which will be enough to stick that down without too much bother. Glue is very strong and that's going to go onto our very vanilla. Okay, um, I felt like it got lost on um, the card without something just to lift it so I've introduced the vanilla layer and then the, the coordinating colour just to lift it. Okay. So I'm just pressing down behind those and that's just going to take a couple of minutes to set but while, we're, while that's setting we'll put that to one side oh there's a little thing stuck to that oh let's just press that down a little bit more like so went quiet on you then didn't I could just put a spare block on that actually. I'm just going to put my um, my little spare H block sitting there um, to leave that to set. I'm going to bring in some more um, very vanilla cardstock and stamp out our other little bits. So we've got our tree to do and our sentiment. So I want the petal pink ink. Um, for the sentiment. So I'm going to get that really well inked. It's a large, large, bold image. Now, if you've got a Stamparatus, you may want to consider using that, actually. Um, I want to give myself some room to get the punch around it. Because um, it's a pale ink, so you may want to go twice. But um, it really comes out in a nice sort of peachy colour on the vanilla, which is really, really cute. So that's petal pink okay and um, on my original sample I actually used Blackberry Bliss one of my fave colors in the world and I've put down there it is got it I'm going to use rich razzleberry with this one instead and stamp our tree so again lots of light tapping very similar color rich razzleberry to um, Blackberry Bliss it's just a little little bit lighter just to change it up a bit um, of course there's a myriad of colors you could use to go with that so it's just got a little bit more of the sort of maroon to it rather than the purple They're very close um, but uh, different enough if you like. So we will get our two and a quarter inch punch. Now how are we going to fit this in there? Is it going to go that way? Yeah. So I'm going to do it this way and the T and the G just about fit um, in there leaving you something like an equal gap for your top and the bottom of your letters there so that will do there we go two and a quarter inch that was okay so that's ready and we will run this through our die cut machine so i hope you guys have had a look at the stamping cut and emboss if you haven't got a die cut machine and you use stamping up dies or you want to use stamping up dies they are a perfect team and it is just so easy to use. It's literally one, two, three. The, the plates are all labelled. So to die cut, you need your base, 
number one, you need your die plate number two, and you need your cutting plates which are number three. Very easy and all the instructions are actually on um, the base plate. Let me just quickly show you that. Just in case you haven't seen it before. If you watch me regularly, you've probably seen this before, but um, there you go. That's the base plate, number one. Sorry about the glare, sorry. Let's just lift that up a minute. Ooh. And it just tells you exactly which sandwiches you need, they call them sandwiches, to use with dies, regular embossing folders and thick embossing folders, the 3D embossing folders. So it's all very, very lovely. I say those like those are labelled one and two. And then um, <laughs> I thought it was weird the other day because I was showing these plates and they didn't have a number on it. And apparently some of them have actually come out from the warehouse without a number on. But these would normally have a number three on them. So, uh, yeah, one, two and three. Easy peasy. OK, so just a bit of quick assembly then. Bring in, there's a card base. I'm going to put a dimensional sort of north and south on this piece here, ready to go. And we're going to add our vanilla piece to our petal pink layer. With dimensionals two, which leaves space very conveniently for some ribbon to go around the middle. So I'm just putting a bit of the um, stamp and seal on there just to let me um, secure that ribbon temporarily. And this is the petal pink um, metallic edged ribbon. Okay, which is lovely, isn't it? Lovely, lovely. And let's uh, chop a bit of that off. And then an extra bit to tie our knot. So I'm going to take that round the middle. Somewhere around there. Like so, so that's ready. Bring in our petal pink thing. Oh, fingers and thumbs today. Goodness me. I think, given that um, I'm obviously having a bit of an issue with my coordination right now, let's just put a um, let's just put a dab of the. Uh, adhesive on there which just gives us a moment or two to um, make sure it's in the right place you see there we go oh still not quite right but that glue is just gonna save me look there we are you probably you might end up with some fingerprints on your foil but it'll just rub off. Just use a soft cloth to rub that off. And there we go. We can move that out of the way. And we can just use some tape runner to add that to our card. And I'm just going to put that about half inch away along the um, that edge there. And just position that like so. Don't usually like things off centre, but um, I think that looks just lovely like that. We've now got our circle that we can put on. Huh, they were supposed to be north and south, they're not. They're kind of more east-west, but you know, hey-ho. <laughs> um, shouldn't matter too much. 
don't think anyway. And we're going to put our circle down. I do like it overhanging, which is why I sort of left a little bit of a, a gap there. And then we're going to use um, a spot of liquid glue to slot our tree in. So just a bit on the stem and down the middle there um, will be good. That's going to tuck in behind there. And again, I want it to overhang this edge, but be connected to the sentiment so it looks like it's part of the same thing. Okay. And then we just want to add our knot of ribbon. I did tie it on. Um, Actually, do you know what? A little bow might be nice. Let's put, let's tie it. Let's give ourselves a bit more ribbon to work with. Let's try a bow first. Let's see what happens. Okay. So I, if I'm sticking a bow on, I make my bunny ears. For single-sided ribbon, this works brilliantly. And then fuss and faff with your the size of your tails and your loops. So you don't want it too big because it will swamp the card there we are and your best friend for gluing down bows here are mini glue dots so you just press onto the glue dot lift it off and it sort of magically sticks I think that's going to go there and we just need to trim those tails so we want your tails to extend beyond your bow loops and if you cut it at an angle it looks cute preferably something like the same length so there we are, that's a bit better there we are those away out your way so we go a bit of a variation on a theme um, bringing in those metallic elements in the foil cardstock and in the foil ribbon okay petal pink with rich razzleberry and then we've got blushing bride with um, blackberry bliss okay so I set this one a little lower on the card as well just offset it a little bit play around with it you probably could have made it a little bit more central if that's um, more your thing and um, just wanted to just try out doing something a little bit off center um, just to remind you this is part of a video hop please do check out all the other participants and of course if you would like to purchase any products the links will be in the description too lovely Thanks ever so much everybody for uh, taking the time to, uh, to watch today. Please do take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye.